so important. Yeah, like, that. knowledge is so important. It's like half the game. Easily. Easily half the game. But that's why I believe anyone could be good at it. Those are Shroud's words, not mine. Shroud, the literal human aimbot. If he says anybody can be good at it, then anybody can be good at it. What's up guys, my name is Barack Gage, and today in this video, I'm gonna be going over five tips that I know the pros are using that most of us aren't in Escape from Tarkov. I'm gonna be going over a lot of things. We're gonna be going over to labs in a little bit and talking about some unconventional stuff, and we're actually gonna be going over some pretty simple stuff as well. But without further ado, let's get right into it. First, number one, guys. The first thing that I don't think enough people are abusing is bunny hopping. Wow, crazy, right? The thing that everybody's complaining about on Reddit, but Nikita really doesn't seem to care about. Oh, to care about. Bunny hopping, guys, is a great way to cover more distance quicker. You can use it to re-engage during fights, to reposition, get to extract quicker, get tossed in the face. Super scav. And also take a million shots to kill a normal scav. Anyway, so bunny hopping, guys, is awesome. In firefights, you can use it, like I said, to reposition. You can use it to retreat. And it's just insane. Some tricks to bunny hopping. Obviously, I'll leave a link to uh, to Vox's video explaining uh, like really in-depth how to bunny hop. I kind of just picked it up naturally, and I think you can too. A good trip with bunny hopping is two steps you listen for two steps and you hold your free look and then you just get used to the timing one two one two one two and you're body hopping bro it's simple it's easy and it's a great way to throw your opponents off make them not understand where you're going and because like i was saying like 95 percent of players don't know how to bunny hop let alone actually do it in combat so most people like if i'm shooting at a dude right here and I have to get down to reload, let's say. If he's just moving normally, and this time, if I get up, I could expect him to be around here or here if he's a normal player. But if he's bunny hopping, if I'm playing against Willers or Landmark or any of those dudes who really know how to do it, Quattro Ace, my favorite, dude, he's gonna be in my face, bro. He's gonna be right here. And, I, and like I said, the crazy part about that is you won't expect it. So guys, be sure, tip number one, learn and abuse bunny hopping. It throws people off like mad. Ah! One of my favorite things, and least appreciated things, I believe, in Tarkov, which is the art of door fighting. I know how crazy that must sound. But, what I mean by that is knowing what doors you can and you can't shoot through. Like with these doors, I know for a fact you can shoot through. But, if we look here, no exit hole, right? So, if a player, is, if I'm fighting a player on the other side of these glass windows here, uh, I'm using a semi-auto here. You know, I have no point really into pre-firing on this blue area. I should really use all my shots through that glass window. And knowing that, if I know that and the other dude doesn't know that, he's going to be sitting here like this. And guess what? None of those bullets actually went through and did anything where all of mine are going to go through and hit his face. So, door fighting is literally sick. It's... I, when I watch clips of Quattro and Landmark and Willers, again, I'm going to be using those three as an example because I do think they're three of, some of the three of the best players in the whole world, and I have, like, hundreds of hours watching them. When I watch them, they abuse doors so much. They're constantly going like this. And then combining that with tip number one, you can also bunny hop like this and kind of use your free look to see where the enemy position is, right? You never want to be predictable, I think is the biggest thing when you're going around doors either. So like, you never just want to, let's say, open the door and walk right through, right? Because that's a one-way ticket to losing all your shit. What you could do, however, is something like, and this is assuming, you know, you're not rolling grenades because you're not a super sweaty tryhard. You can open the door, wait, and do what we talked about, the bunny hop jump. You could open both doors. Now you have more angle to work with as well as being able to shoot through some windows. Basically what I'm trying to say here 
is knowing what doors and what windows you can shoot through. Like, for instance, you can't shoot through this glass window here. But guess what window you can, the glass you can't shoot through? Right here. So knowing what doors and what windows you can shoot through is impeccable to winning gunfights in this game. I really think it's sort of one of the things that the pros kind of aren't talking about. Um, and I can't tell if they're not doing it because they want to hold out the information or if they just don't even really have acknowledge how important it is. But from seeing my friends play and how they just straight up walk in through doors and go, What's up Raiders, you want to kill me and take my shit? Compared to how Quattro Ace plays, you know, zooming and cruising. I can't even do it. <laughs> as fast as he, he does. But the unpredictability is everything when it comes to Tarkov and playing around doors is key. Alright dudes, and for tip number three, I have do your gear runs. Now, gear runs are like upgraded scav runs, okay? Now, gear runs, loot runs, call it whatever the hell you want, it doesn't really matter. The principle here is low risk, high reward, yield, that's what you want. The reason I brought you guys here is because this is my personal loot run. If you guys don't know, this is the Bunker Hermetic e Extract, so it's super easy to hit. Uh, especially if somebody else pulls it for you, which happens all the time. I literally come down here and I just loot all these shelves, even if you don't have a key, man. You leave these shelves back there, you get tank batteries and stuff. But you should drop 200 grand, get one key, it's enough to fill up a bag. Get two, you can fill up an attack two. Get all four, you can fill up attack twos for you and your boys, that's what I like to do. But anyway, so the importance, my, my whole point here is the importance of doing gear runs isn't just the gear you get, right? It's the confidence you get and the ability to get over the number one thing that holds people back in this game, which is gear fear. What's the best way to get over gear fear? Have a lot of gear. That's like the most basic way. Don't be a fucking cheater and go and buy ruples and shit. Don't do that. Don't do that because you have nuts and you're better than that. But you should definitely have a bunch of gear so you don't, you're not afraid to take risks. You're not afraid to push. You're not afraid uh, to do the things you gotta do to win. Sometimes you gotta, you gotta do some shit when your heart's racing and make some plays that you, that you know, if you're rocking a geared out SVD, you wouldn't make. So that is why we do these runs with our M983s and act, I, I'm not going to say the R word. We're not, we're not, we're not the three letter R word, but we are efficient. So what I like to do, I'm just showing you guys my example of a loot run. I really think you can do anywhere. Interchange is great. Just go in the mall, loot all the stores. I like reserve, as I said. Even if you don't have keys, you can just go loot all these buildings over here. Go loot dorms, dude. You'll have so much loot. You know what to do with it. But with reserve, obviously, if you want, you can go hit the D2 extract, which I have in, uh, explain, which I explained in my last video yesterday. Or you can just come right over here, which... Believe it or not, if you don't take the uh, the short way I just took there, if you come through this building, a lot of times when I have a lot of loot, I'll sit in this room here and kind of scope this left area out. And because of the foliage here, you're actually rather safe to get to this building and not get sniped at from dome, right? So this is just my loot run. I like to go in here, grab that duffel bag. You know, if I'm not totally full on loot from the from the bunker, which I am when you have keys, but you know, before I had all my keys, uh, you can definitely come in here. What's this? A f like a graphics card, bro. That's 500 grand. All right, that's a loadout right there, dude. You literally just got a you can you got a labs key card, a level four armor, and uh, a tricked out HK with this, right? And that can go up your butt too, for the record. Right? Boop. So anyway, that's my whole point. Now, I don't give a shit. I'll go buy, you know, I'll go buy a level 4 rig and AK with the SM and I'll go hop into labs. You know, it's just this graphics card. So, anyway, guys, uh, that's tip number three for sure. Do gear runs. Don't be lazy. Uh, you know, don't be lazy. Don't So, you don't have to run around and suffer using PS ammo and level 2 armor and, you know, getting wrecked by the chads. Become the chad with your gear runs. All right, man, for my next tip... Number four is definitely going to be always have some sort of cover or concealment. Now, this is going to be a little difficult for me to show like exact footage of, but it should be pretty easy to wrap your head around. And if you remember in the last uh, tip number three, when I was over here showing how it's actually rather safe if you sit in that room and scope that area out, it's because of the concealment that these uh, the foliage offers you, right? A lot of people love sitting up here, including myself, on this mountain and just sniping people all game and then going and looting them at the end. And you can really prey victim fall. I can't talk. 
fall victim to that uh, if you're not constantly aware of cover and concealment around you. So, what is cover? Obviously, it's the shit that stops bullets, right? It's pretty simple. This thing, uh, well, it's probably small. Sandbags. What's concealment? Those trees. Really simple, and yet probably the most, like, if you didn't understand how concealment and cover works, you would literally always just be running around, running at people. You may as well just have your hatchet out, sprinting at people. It doesn't even really matter if you have a gun. Because 90% of this game is basically moving from cover to cover to cover and staying as hidden as you can until you can get that nice, clean headshot. So, be sure guys, tip number four, always, always maximize your cover and concealment. All right guys, this fifth and final tip is probably one of the most slept on, if not the most slept on. I didn't really understand how overpowered and important it is to maximize your trader value in this game. Last wipe, I didn't really care about my trader rep. If you guys didn't know, these little Roman numerals and crowns, when they're max, it turns into a crown. You get discounts and uh, unlock different purchase opportunities from the traders. So like mechanic, you can either go to the flea market and spend like, what, three and a half mil on a weapons case, or you can just level them up to three and do the trade in, right? All these things will run you about uh, 800,000 to a mil, I'd say. Or you can go here and go ahead and buy it for three and a half. This is just a really good example of how not knowing the values of traders can cause you to waste a lot of money. Just remember, if uh, the key points is Prapor, he does like ammo in barrels. Therapist does your, well, heals, right? That should be pretty obvious. Fence is your uh, garbage and stuff you can't tell anybody else. Skier is your attachments, so your laser sights, your grips, um, your your sights. <clears throat> Peacekeeper is your helmets, as well as uh, your M4s. He's really good for those, and he also deals in your cash. Mechanic, just sell most of your stuff to mechanic, like gun parts and uh, ammo. Just sell all that stuff to mechanic. But he also sells, like, gun bodies, uh, and, and your big barrels for uh, your heavier guns. Ragman, obviously you sell your clothes to Ragman, and Jaeger is really good for selling. You can sell like water and rifles to him. You definitely wanna max him out because you wanna do the Red Rebel trade. Do not buy Red Rebel on flea market. Do the trade or farm it, you'll save a lot of money. But that's just an example of what the traders do. I personally always, 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 if I'm doing a budget, I don't wanna spend a lot of money, as I talked about, you get the AK-74, take the silencer off, sell it, that'll run you 12 grand. Go to Ragman, level two, get the onesie, and boom, dude, you're now a killing machine, and you've spent about 60 grand for a gun and a rig. That is like the lowest example. Once you get your Peacekeeper, um, I can't even show you here, but pe once you get Peacekeeper up, now you can start playing with the big boy guns. He also sells like your night vision and your chops for your helmet. If you're wondering why these chads are constantly able to run around with crazy gear, it's because they're maximizing the efficiency of the traders. And you guys can totally do that too. Just take a look at what they have to offer and do a little playing around and just make sure you're not wasting any ruples because at the end of the day, that is like the most important resource you have. So tip number five, make sure you're maximizing your traders. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. I really, really appreciate the view, and I really appreciate the support on the last few videos. That's awesome. I hope you guys learned something out of this, and I hope you guys have an awesome day. Don't forget to like and subscribe for uh, daily videos, and yeah, I really appreciate it, guys. See you guys in the next one.